With the 2013 season vastly approaching, Coach Brian Jenkins and his staff made it clear to this team that they needed to be ready. With everyday reminders that this year was going to be a fight till the very end. His theory often comparing the game of football to a heavyweight fight, similarities being game flow and sudden changes in momentum, with both spending countless hours in training. A fighter becomes a champion long before he enters the ring, just as a championship football team becomes in the weight room and on the field in August. Uh, one of my favorite things that he does with the boxing is in the locker room before the game is when uh, he gets, gets amped up and starts doing the body blows and, and, and uh, that kind of gets me fired up ready for the games. We took boxing in as like, we use it as an analogy to compare it to football wise. We just say, you know, every boxer has to fight. There's, there's, no one, there's nowhere where you're just going to go in and win. You're going to take a few and you're going to get a few. That's it, man. Mono and mono. It's you and that man every snap. You know, you're being tested. You know, it's a battle of will. But just as boxing is. When you relate your training to boxing, you look at yourself as an individual. You know you have 10 other guys around you in the field, but you know that as a man, you have to take on your opponent. And you can't let your opponent beat you mentally or physically. So you have to ask yourself if you prepare mentally and physically to be better than your opponent. And if you get answer that question yes, and the other 10 guys around you can say yes, then you know your team's gonna be successful and you're gonna be able to beat your opponent. The 2013 season was probably the most hyped football season in recent Wildcat history because it began with two football teams pitted as the top two football teams in all of black college football. The Wildcat football team knew that the die would be cast for the 2013 football season with that classic matchup in Nashville, Take Tennessee. The clothes off my back, my back, and I let you. give and take. In the end, all of us in that final drive, the offense, the defense was keeping us in the game the entire game, and the offense got together, and we told each other, let's do it right here. And, you know, Jackie took us down the field, and Murph ended up closing it out for us, so. It was it was a low-scoring game. I mean, uh, nobody could get into the end zone. Uh, so first touchdown came in the fourth quarter, and uh, I caught the ball in the flat and uh, reached for the pylon, got it in there, and. Uh, that was a really good feeling. Um, it was the first touchdown of the season, and uh, being the one to score it. Whenever I get into the end zone, it's a big deal for me, and uh, that was that was something that was kind of special, being the first game. I mean, it was a great team win for us. It really just set the stage for the season. The FIU game was a measuring stick, not just for Bethune-Cookman, but for the MIAC Conference, because no one, had no one in our conference had ever defeated uh, an FBS school, which is exactly what FIU was. We went out there and we just started playing with them. And, uh, I really, on the opening kickoff, uh, you could tell that we belonged there. Uh, Drexler came down and smacked the kid on the opening kickoff, and uh, it kind of set the tone for the whole rest of the game, and we just rolled. and. 
Um, you know, the fan support was great. You know, we went out there and, you know, played 60 minutes. And after the game, they had no choice but to congratulate us and, you know, give us our props because, you know, we worked so hard. And then, you know, being able to show an FBS school that we can play with them, you know, it also made us feel good inside and made other teams, you know, give us our respect that we deserve. Lining up against Florida State, that's a great football team. And I think it proved a lot about our football team. It answered a lot of questions. Even though we came away uh, or fell short of victory, we still got in there toe-to-toe -to -toe with the national champions and did some things that other teams couldn't do. And uh, I think it allowed us to see what we could do if we believed and we set our mind to it. Coach Jinx, you know, he's a he's a deep. It's it's a it's a method behind everything he's doing. It's a method behind the madness. And uh, in the off season, he scheduled South Carolina State for our homecoming game. And you know, knowing South Carolina State's reputation, you know, it's a slap in the face to uh, be someone's homecoming opponent. So we knew they would take it that way. And uh, it was just something I wanted. I was tired. And, you know, I knew that when the ball was coming, I just had, I wanted to make the play, and that's all. That's all I was thinking, make every play. One play, I remember one pass from Quentin got lost in the lost in the sun. I couldn't see the ball the entire route. I couldn't see the ball at all. The ball just fell in my hands. At any time, uh, recent, in recent memory, I've seen a team physically dominate South Carolina State the way that our defensive football team did. I was very interested in the comments of Buddy Pugh, and he said, I take my hat off to Bethune-Cookman for the effort that they gave that day. That's what as competitors, that's what we live for. But they were, you know, they were just a step ahead of us in everything. And some some teams had to kick out us for us to just play with a little emotion. You know? But when all of us do that, we're unstoppable. And that's what we were showing in the fourth quarter. But I just hate talking about that loss. Like. And Norfolk came in and capitalized on a moment where we lacked some discipline, and they capitalized on a moment where we were lackadaisical. And, and that totally falls on me. Take a step back and look ourselves in the eye and ask ourselves, what are we doing? What are we gonna do? And how are we gonna, fin how are we gonna finish this thing? Uh, 
no matter what the records are, when Floyd A and M and and and, and Bethune Cookman get together, it's in marbles. It doesn't make any difference what the competition is. You better know it's Wildcats and rappers, and all the records go, all of the rec records and statistics go out of the window. We've been on the other side of the ledger a few times with the poor team coming in, and we've been able to upset the apple cart. So Florida a and knew that a lot was riding. They could turn their football season around on one Saturday by knocking off the Wildcats, and what would be more special than keeping the Wildcats from winning the conference championship in a possible uh, playoff berth. a fitting end. It was a perfect end to a great football season. And I'm telling you, I'm telling the Wildcat Nation, I'm getting used to winning in Orlando. It's been, uh, playoffs have been rough. Came out and, uh, Uh... We just could have made a plays. We could have made a play. But it was just a, a, a situation where, once again, we didn't put our best foot forward. But we're still confident that, that we're going to find a way to get through that, that wall as far as winning in the playoffs. When you've got nothing left to give, but something keeps you going. Adversity comes. Adversity, comes. Adversity, comes. Adversity causes some men to break and others to break records. William Arthur Moore. When the world rises against you and you choose to stay and fight. I fear no man on this earth. I fear no man on, I fear no man on this earth. I fear no man on this earth that breathes the same air as I do. Bernard Hopkins. When I will becomes I did. Don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life. Your life as a champion, Muhammad Ali. When you realize fear cannot take what you did not give it. It's not whether you get knocked down. Get knocked down. Get knocked down. Get knocked down. It's whether you get up. Get up. Get back up. Vince Lombardi. When they say you won't finish, in that moment you do. It's not the size of the man. The size of the man. The size of the man. But the size of his heart, his heart, but the size of his heart, that matters. Vander Holyfield. And you'll know that you were ready. I think to really grasp the concept of never being satisfied, I think the aha moment would be when someone tells you, you know, well, 10 and 3, that, that's a very respectable record. But if you think about it, a few years from now, and you hear, oh, well, the record was 10 and 3, no one really asked who the 10 were. What, what happened to the other two? That's what they asked about. Brian Jenkins, when he came in, he spoke of putting a program together, building a program. When you build a program, you lay the building blocks, the foundations, uh, such a manner that you can reload. And I think that that's what's happening right now. We have a program here. It may not be reaching uh, a dynastic period yet, but we're well on our way for that happening. I think when you can recruit the way we recruit, when you, when you can coach up kids the way you coach them up, when you can get transfers who respect the quality of your program, the brand of your football, to the point that they want to come and be a part of that, that's when you know you have something special. And I think that that's what we're building here at Bethune-Cookman. Question, are you satisfied? No, far from.